Hey everyone. Okay, so um, today's talk will be somewhat different than my usual ones. I've been told not to speak again about holographic consensus. I will be requested. Um, so it won't be about holographic consensus. It wouldn't be about uh, protocol design. I, won't, I wouldn't demo alchemy. So it'll be a very meta kind of talk, okay? So it's a risky talk. It's very high level. Uh, I think these kind of topics are not maybe closely related to what we do every day. But I think they are often neglected. So this, this will be my humble attempt to touch upon the bigger picture or actually a smaller part of the bigger picture. So you can help in that. If you feel that I'm straying too far away or just losing you, please just ask me a question and bring me back. All right. So I think I don't need to convince any here in this room uh, that DAOs are hot, right? They are very trendy. Maybe, maybe the hottest. Uh, topic in the in the Ethereum ecosystem right now, but it's not that clear why. And why I'm saying that is because it's not even clear what is a DAO. I think if you ask in this conference 10 different people what a DAO is, you'd likely get 10 different answers. And more so, neither of those answers will be really well defined or clear or completely uh, tangible. And even if that answer is somewhat clear, it's not at all clear why DAO should be better than other things, right? So it's still, we are at the skeptic phase and we, are, we need to go through, penetrate that, uh, that barrier, which, which, which makes a lot of sense in this stage. So this talk will be a very humble attempt uh, to maybe touch a little bit about what at least I think DAOs should be or can be, and maybe somewhat um, shedding some light why they can be better than existing structures. Okay, so what is it, what is it DAO then? So maybe it's a corporate, kind of like a corporate, but more open and decentralized. That, that's like a common answer that we see uh, often. Or maybe it's an open source collaboration. We, we, we're already familiar with this stuff. Open source collaboration happens for decades. But now that is equipped with consensus. So the ability to decide, own, uh, distribute budget, and, and so on and so forth. Or maybe perhaps it's, it's a social network, something more like Facebook group, a social network that is now suddenly armed with the power to own, fund, a, a raise funds, a manage budget, and so on and so forth. Decide and own. So what is really? So the, the, the one common denominator of all three of those is that the additional new factor, the additional new element is decentralized governance. So this is key. So for, through, throughout the years, through the course of searching and trying to imagine what a DAO is and then designing for, um, at least for me, my intuition was more, more, more tended to the, to, the two, to the first two. So it was kind of like in between extrapolation of the corporate structure, but more decentralized, or something like an open source collaboration. And today I want to suggest that maybe, maybe DAO could be something more closer to social networks that previously, previously we, we thought about. Now, honestly, it's not, there is no, there is no one clear answer here, because really there, there are going to be many different kinds of DAOs, many different use cases. And different use cases will, will sit in different points on this phase phase. So there is no one answer. So maybe it's more like a design question, how we in DAOs like see DAOs and how we're designing for them. And I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm proposing that we are going to, to slightly drift more towards the social network idea. And in order to also project that idea better, we also give it slightly new name, slightly different name, just to emphasize its characteristics. So rather than DAOs in this talk, I will call them collaborative networks. So social networks plus the ability to decide, to own, to manage, I would call that a collaborative network. Okay, so why a collaborative network is better? So firstly, better than what? So social network is actually the easiest to explain, and that's also why maybe it's the best uh, uh, value proposition. So social networks, they are very powerful today but they cannot raise funds, they cannot collectively manage them, they cannot pursue their goals beyond the conversational level, right? So it's clearly if we, if we, in, if we entitle social networks with these abilities, they, they are become more powerful, I think much more powerful. Then the other two, uh, the, the second is also easy, open source collaboration, well, up until recently, cannot really, again, hold funds, distribute funds, distribute budget, distribute, distribute the ownership of their product. So again, this will definitely enhance open source collaboration, and, and third is maybe the harder, harder to sell. So we want to argue that companies as they are structured today, they are hard to scale 
and more so when they scale, it's hard to maintain alignment of interest at scale. So then we claim that the DAOs will, or cloud networks will do that, but that, that requires a proof. So it's not, it's far from trivial that, you know, decentralized governance protocol will actually do that. And that's maybe why it's harder to understand that. Okay, so now I will try to, so this will be the second part of the talk and I will, in, in which I will try to take a, a step back, zoom out, and try to understand, not for a specific use case, try to understand why maybe large scale coordination not only gonna be preferable on top of uh, existing structure, but actually maybe inevitable or inevitably superior. So for that, let me, like, let me start from the beginning. Let, let discuss, let's discuss the free market. So what is the free market? So the free market, I argue, is a great, great means to coordinate and align the interest of many, many agents, so a large number of agents. It is decentralized, we love decentralization here. It's self-organizing, it's scalable, it's super effective. And it is inspired by economic biomimicry of evolution through competition natural selection. So, so far it looks very, very good. However, this is something that is less appreciated, I think, uh, and I want to argue that the free market also has failure modes. It also fails to align the individual and collective interests sometimes by incentivizing individuals to act against the collective benefit. So, you know, the premise of free, free market is that it actually aligns the individual and collective, collective interests. And I want to argue that it's not always doing so. And I would just throw one reason, although there are a bunch of reasons, there are a bunch of failure modes, like game theoretic failure modes, and I will just deep dive into one. And this one I call hidden variables. But, so we'll, we'll, dive, we'll dive deep into that, but assuming that once they, they are failure modes of the free market, it also means there is more opportunity for larger cooperation becoming the winning strategy over pure competition. And I, and I will try to argue that this is actually an extrapolative process where we start with pure competition, over time we get to, uh, in a sense, uh, you will see not exactly pure collaboration, but we'll, we'll get there, but a much, much higher degree of collaboration. Any question, by the way, please just feel free to stop me. Yeah. Oh, I, I will definitely give examples, that definitely. Yeah, so far it's very, very abstract and that's exactly what I'm gonna do next. Um, the computer is stuck. Let's see how I can get out of that. Any idea? For a Mac user, it's a, oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's, let's, let me just repeat what I said, but in more details. And this, this will need to take step by step slowly, okay? So I wanna argue that higher abstraction, we are constantly creating an environment with higher abstraction and higher complexity of production. And then higher abstraction and complexity of production increases hidden variables and thus the opportunity to manipulate the market leading to marginal de-optimization of all hidden variables. I'll take, I'll break that apart, okay? So in ancient times, when I bought an apple, there was a pretty good correlation between how the apple looked and how good it was, you know, how tasty, but more so how nutritional it was, right? It was a good correlation. Whereas today, with such a complex environment, we use so many uh, different elements in the production uh, chain that there, is, there could be very bad correlation, actually, between the visibility, the visible variables, and the hidden variables. So an apple today, can be a very poisonous or very non-nutritional and yet look amazing uh, uh, to me. So it would almost be impossible to read from the apple if it's a good product or not a good product. So there's a lot of hidden variables there. More so, if I'm a farmer and I, what I would optimize for, right? I would optimize for the visible variables, right? I wanna sell the best, but I will actually de-optimize for the hidden variables. I will reduce my cost as much as possible to get the shittiest visible, vis invisible variables as much as I reduce uh, my costs. So for example, for the example of the farmer, um, well, I can use a chemical and that chemical reduces significantly my cost. Now, maybe I know that that chemical is poisonous. Maybe I don't know, I just don't, don't wanna ask that. I will use that chemical because that will reduce my cost and will increase my gains at the end of the month. Now, maybe I wouldn't do that, but someone else will do that. And eventually we will all together 
it's a race to the bottom. We will marginalize the invisible variables to the, to the very much bottom at the end of the process. And that's how we get very beautiful apples, which are very non-nutritional, sometimes poisonous. And only 20 years after, we discover that you know, some, some, some very wide uh, um, a, a, a cancer uh, that is, is, is due to the, uh, some chemicals that were used heavily in the industry, and we just didn't know that or didn't bother to ask before. So again, let's try to just repeat that step. Higher abstraction and complexity of production means much, much more hidden variables. More hidden variables means that I have an opportunity to manipulate the market by de-optimizing the hidden variables and optimizing the visible variables. And if I don't do that, someone else do that, eventually all do that, and collectively we are marginally de-optimizing all hidden variables. And that's where we are going in, in, in all industries. Okay, so the next step, if we are marginally de-optimizing all hidden variables, that increase the conflict between individual and collective interests. So now my interest, usually we said, we learned in the free market that the free market aligns the interests of the individual and the collective. But here we just see the opposite, right? I have an interest to produce the shittiest product, right? As long as nobody can discover that in a finite time, in a short time, uh, that will hurt my production. So uh, there is a growing conflict between the individual and the collective interest, which is reducing then the effectivity of pure competition. Now, reduced effectivity of pure competition means increasing the opportunity for wider, tighter, and more effective group coordination, which then also requires higher, higher abstraction. Now, there are other factors. I try to just slice one, one angle of that bigger picture. There are other factors that are feedbacking, loop feedbacking and, 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 and pulling from competition to collaboration. This is just one of them. But I think this one is self-sufficient. It's like kind of a closed loop. Because then wider, tighter, and more effective group coordination then pushes up even further the level of construction and complexity of production. And now we see that there is a feedback loop, right? So we're constantly moving into more production, sorry, more complexity of production, increasing amount of hidden variables, uh, increasing manipulation of the market, uh, uh, increasing uh, or decreasing effectivity of pure competition, and increasing op opportunity for wider collaboration. So this is, a, this is just a drift that is actively occurring. And again, hidden variables is just one feedback loop. There are others, and for example, I just named one, so it's network effect. You can analyze a similar feedback loop with network effects, and all of them push it together in the same direction from competition to cooperation. Now, you might say, uh, this, is, uh, this looks too idealistic, right? We are going, I'm, I'm saying that we are going to end in a pure cooperation. So actually, I'm, I'm saying we're not going to end in pure cooperation, and what happens is something else. So we start with competition and natural selection. Let's start with the sales level. Then I'm arguing that on a general ground, there is a constant drift between tangible to abstraction. There is a constant drift between competition to cooperation, and there is a constant drift between individual selection, individual natural selection, into group selection, because now better groups are selected. And then at some point, there is a critical threshold of coordination that I I want to conjecture that, although I cannot support that, I want to conjecture it's related with the emergence of self-organization, that suddenly the groups themselves become the individuals, and there is the next level complexity organism, in this case will be humans, and again, competition and natural selection between humans. And again, tangible will become the abstraction, competition will become cooperation, individual selection will become group selection, there will be a critical threshold of coordination and emergence of self-organization, then suddenly there will be a new entity, the next level complexity organism, which we call DAOs or collaborative networks, but DAOs is shorter, so I put that. Um, and then again, we start all over the place, uh, competition, natural selection, but this time between DAOs. These DAOs will eat each other and kill each other and, and swallow each other and so forth. So note, note that this is not, it's not competition versus cooperation. Competition and cooperation are actually closely tied together and the competition at a higher level of complexity is actually the driving force for strong coordination at the lower level. Okay, that's, that's really maybe the most important uh, uh, conclusion of the talk. The competition at the higher level is, higher level complexity is the driving force of strong coordination at the lower level. So these would be the takeaways. If, if, if you completely lost me or I lost you or, or, or just mumbling this stuff, this will be my takeaways, this is the conclusion. So firstly, evolution is not, as we usually told, just about uh, um, um, competition. Evolution is actually a song and dance between competition and cooperation. 
Uh, I argue that pure computation is increasingly failing at increasing complexity. I argue that uh, uh, cooperation is increase increasing in that together until a phase transition occurs where cooperation becomes suddenly, that's, that's, when I say suddenly, I mean phase transition, uh, when suddenly cooperation is the winning strategy, and I also conjecture that that's related with self-organization. And then there's new emerging creatures that maybe have something of the traits of corporates because they can decide, they can, they can collectively own, they can they have sovereignty, like collective sovereignty. But I would, I would like to suggest that perhaps they look more like social networks. And for that, we call them collaborative networks. And finally, decentralized governance is the key element for uh, this leap. Thank you. All right, so we have humans cooperating. We already have them in uh, the form of countries, perhaps, and companies competing with each other. Why is the decentralized governance the next key leap, as you said in your last sentence? Yes, that's a really good question. So again, it's, 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 these are, these are, uh, it's a balance, it's a competition between competition and cooperation. So right now, the, the level of cooperation, or if you wish, you can translate that to the cost of coordination. The cost of coordination is too high, and I'm just saying that once cost of coordination becomes low enough, below a threshold, suddenly cooperation become, will become the, the winning strategy. And I'm also conjecturing, but again, this is not, some, not, not something I'm supporting. I'm conjecturing that the crossing of the threshold, the, this barrier threshold of coordination cost is related with self-organization. Self-organization is related with decentralized governance. So countries, states, companies, they are, you know, they are better cooperation than what we've had 200 years ago, but are not enough coordination. So uh, we can go back to the, you know, the first slide. Basically, those, those entities do not maintain, either do not scale or do not maintain a line of interest and effectivity at scale. So you need that, coordina that coordination cost to be lower. And I argue for that you need self-organization or self-coordination or decentralized governance. You need that in order to allow for increasing the scale of cooperation while maintaining alignment of interest and effectivity.